this time on Bondi Rescue. The biggest hailstorm in 20 years How gnarly. lashes Australia's east coast. Look at all the surfers. A near miss. Oh, Arizona. The flags conceal a drowning tourist. And a man on a mission. It was going to be the greatest entrance of all time. Only a few weeks into summer, and the rescue statistics at Bondi are huge. Last year was a very quiet year. We only did about 10 rescues. And this year, we've done over 300. <laughs> the first girl that needed help the most turns out she was a swim instructor. <laughs> I don't know if I'd be going to her swim school. They just saved two lives. Rock on. <laughs> Not every lifeguard enjoys a storm. Everyone knows that Jules has a phobia of storms. No, I don't like storms. They're not my favourite thing at all. I respect them, but I don't like them. I'm not comfortable in storms. But this storm has another surprise in store. One that's got everyone ducking for cover. Some of the hailstones were honestly like the size of golf balls. They're full on. Mate. <laughs> I hadn't seen hail that big for many years, and we were all pretty amazed by it. Oh, oh. You're getting bigger. Who lines over there? Of course, I always get a bit concerned about the surface in the water just because of the size of the hailstones, you know. Look at all the surfers with their floors on it. It's the biggest hailstorm to hit Sydney in 20 years, and some locals don't want to miss the occasion. Here we are! <laughs> We're stuck in the surf! Woo! Oh, I've pretty much come down here every day for the last 53 years. That's quite unusual, yeah. We, you know, get a little bit of hail, but not, uh, not like that normally. It's <laughs> hailing! Yeah, you don't want, you don't want to get them on your head. One of the great things of Bondi, it's normally a beautiful, lovely beach, but when it's bad, it's bad. <laughs> Even when the storms do come in, you can't completely let your guard down because not everyone leaves the water. Max, Harrison and Mario monitor the beach from the shelter of Bondi Central. Max thinks he's seen something in the water. But then it's gone. I was looking at the flag and I was wondering, is there actually a person behind there? Whatever's there is obscured from view by the flag. The flag is in the middle. 500 metres to the north, <laughs> Chapo has a clear view. Yeah, go ahead. And then all of a sudden, the guy popped out from behind the flag, and I was like, wow, we really need to get this guy. It's unclear how long the man has been struggling against the rip. We've got to swim it. The, the, we'll swim out, and now he got stuck. As I got closer, I realised I'm in here. This guy's not good. The man bounces off the bottom. He's up here. Oh, Arizona. Each wave costs Harrison vital seconds. It's very close to him, yep. As precious seconds tick away, the man barely has enough energy to keep his head up. But that's when I'd noticed that closer in, there was another guy who was just in the same amount of trouble. Another man has drifted into exactly the same spot. But from the tower, he's also hidden by the flag. Mario is unaware Harrison has a double rescue on his hands and needs backup. I turned the board around and I tried to catch a wave in, but on the angle, so I could pass him and, and collect him on the way through. In my head, it, I thought it would go to plan. 
didn't go to plan. Mario can't see the second swimmer behind the flags, so Chapo races to back up from the other end of the beach. To me, they look like they're in a lot of trouble. Chapo and someone else. Overshooting the second patient poses a new dilemma to Harrison. Who to help next? I told the first guy to just don't let go. Really dangerous to go out and try and rescue someone with no equipment because they're going to see you afloat and they're just going to jump all over you. They don't care if they take you down with them. Chapo battles the waves. In a panic, the man pushes Harrison underwater. In that situation, Harrison was well in control of what he was doing. He just needed my help to do it more effectively. The two men are part of a Korean tour group. They swam in a strong rib. We, we saw them just, and it was very touch and go, yeah. They were, you know, whether we say seconds, I'm not sure, but if we're not here, they drown. <laughs> Tour guide Mary had told the guys to swim between the flags. I told you between the flag, we are only allowed to huh? sign between the flag. It's too far from here. When the sun returns, it's a Christmas present for beachgoers. Merry Christmas! Yeah, we're better to be on Christmas Day than Bondi Beach. Every festive season, the man in the red suit puts on a show for local kids. Jet ski Santa, surfing Santa, skateboard Santa, painted Santa. It had been a long line of successful Santas, till Reedy decided on Scuba Santa. <laughs> scuba Santa didn't really go to plan. I planned on scuba diving from out the back and make a gracious entrance as Scuba Santa. And I ended up just coming out looking like a drowned rat. This year, Reedy wants to redeem himself. I feel like I can outdo myself here. I've got an awesome sleigh. I've got the suit. And, uh, and I feel like we can achieve Bondi Santa greatness. The pressure isn't just the children on the beach. The pressure is executing the job right in front of all the lifeguards, because they're going to have the biggest laugh. Maxie and trainee Berkey will be Santa's little helpers. But not everyone is convinced this is a winning combo. Oh, my God. The elves, Berkey and Maxie. Hey! Like, I wouldn't want Berkey to be my assistant. <laughs> Especially not such an important job like Santa, Santa has. And, and Maxie's a bit of a bullhead. So it was a terrible team. Absolutely shocking thing. Are we ready, Al? This year's Santa extravaganza is a surfing sleigh powered by elves catching a wave all the way to the beach. Just want to make you all aware that Santa has just left the North Pole and he's at North Bondi now. He's just out there on the board. He's just jumped off his sled. <laughs> His estimated time of arrival will be about three minutes to shore. Oh, 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 oh. Peanut gallery in place? <laughs> Check. Kids waiting for the spoils? Check. Reading, striving for redemption? Oh, oh, oh. Check. It was just going to be the greatest entrance of all time. You know what I want to say? The old nose island stuff squatch and ready to go and fly on over the handlebars. Well, I thought they were going to crack a wave all the way to shore. You know, these guys can catch waves in their sleep. But then, disaster. I can only we got it. I was stoked. <laughs> the tower went up, but it was like a volcano in there. I'm sure the whole beach was just laughing their asses off at these three grown men crashing their sleigh into the sand. 
Santa's a band of shit. When Santa was face down, the kids thought maybe it's going to be a bad Christmas, but I helped him up the beach and, yeah, they were quite excited to rip in and have some uh, goodies. Merry Christmas! Another sack, and it was full of lollies, and everybody dug in. <laughs> so, what's the verdict on this year's Santa? Yeah, he's a bad Santa. Thumbs up. We're really sad. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I nailed it. I feel like my elves sabotaged me. I don't know what he's thinking, blaming ourselves. You know, we're in the workshop 364 days a year, and he asks us to help him on the one day, and he blames engine trouble. Come on, mate. Go for another swim.